Hata si lazima uingie. Je, sasa toka na bag?
Yeah, so that we can carry you Yeah, yeah. Of course. No. What happened? Yeah, yes. Somebody told me Thank you so much. 
On behalf of Florence and Willis, we want to welcome you to South Bay Pepper Church. I realize that we have uh, uh, guests here. Uh, Justice Mchilule is together with us. Honorable Kaluma is together with us. Ministers of the Gospel are here. And we just want to say, Karibuni San, Wala San. We want to begin our service. Uh, we were scared to begin at exactly 11.30. And I want to call upon Bishop Charles Ayiro to come and open this session with a word of prayer as we begin to bring in the bridal party. Can you stand? In the presence of the Lord, the Bible says there's the fullness of joy. We are going to celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And we are, we are believing great things are going to happen because God's people have gathered. So I take this opportunity to welcome every one of you. In this place here, we sit in the presence of God, we relax and be sensitive to what God is going to speak to you individually in a very special way. God bless you, Nakaribun. Thank you, thank you. Amen. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all who are present here and those who are watching us from Australia, Tanzania, Uganda, Congo, Malawi, Zimbabwe, Ethiopia, Nigeria, South Africa, United Kingdom, South America, Canada, and America. And all who have tuned in to this live streaming at the Pepper Church South B to watch the wedding of our dear sister Florence Timna Habwe and our brother Willis Nona Omolo. We want you to enjoy from wherever you are. Uh, those of you who want to get a link, the link will be appearing in our screens shortly. But this time, we want to usher in the groom. The groom and his best man will walk down the aisle at the tune of a little song, Yesu Royana, by John Dege. So it is my joy and pleasure now to usher in the groom. Karimuni.
Can I bear a hand one more time, please? Thank you. Now we want to usher in the bridal party that will march down the aisle to the tune of Waibie by Alice Kimanzi. Waibie by Alice Kimanzi.
bless you. Okay? These are songs that remind us of those days. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. They sink us deep. Praise Jesus. We don't want to put the dot com ones. We have them, but I can look at the crowd I have so we connect with them. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen.
So I thank you for Florence today and her husband to be. Thank you that you make everything beautiful in its time. And we are witnesses of your grace. We are witnesses of your love. We are witnesses of your blessing. We are witnessing of the fact that you are a covenant keeping God. And Father, as we gather here in this, uh, this important ceremony, we pray that your presence will be real to us. We pray for your mighty hand of blessing upon everyone. We resist every interference from the evil one in any way and in any form in the name of Jesus. And we pronounce the heavenly blessing upon this ceremony now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I mean, let's give the Lord a big hand as we sit. Amen. We just allow the bride to put down to start, the groom and the, and the bride, and we proceed. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the presence of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in a holy matrimony. Marriage is a holy state instituted by God signifying unto us the mystical union that is between Christ and his church, which he adorned and beautified with his presence in the first miracle that he wrought in Cana of Galilee, and is commanded by St. Paul to be honorable among men, and there is not by any to be enterprised, nor taken in hand, and advisedly, lightly, or to satisfy men's carnal lust and appetites, but soberly and in the fear of God, Duly considering causes for which it was ordained. First, it was ordained that one should be a spiritual helpmate to the other in Christian faith, thus upholding each other until the end of their spiritual pilgrimage. Secondly, it was ordained that one should be a helper to the other in the labor of the world for companionship, mutual society help and comfort which a husband and a wife ought to have for each other both in prosperity and in adversity. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. Thirdly, it was ordained for the procreation of children to be brought up in the fear and the nature of the Lord and to the praise of his holy name. Fourthly, it was ordained for a remedy against sin to avoid, to avoid fornication that such persons that have known the gift of continuity might marry and keep themselves and defile the members of the body of Christ. Into this holy state, these two persons come now to be joined together. Therefore, if any man can show any just cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him declare it, or else hereafter forever hold their peace. This is the fourth time we are making this announcement. It has been announced at the Attorney General's office according to the laws of the land. And if you are there, you feel this will not continue. You can show, but I can clearly tell you from where I sit that you are late because you should have come with a court order yesterday. But for now, we declare that uh, your reasons are invalid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and everybody say, Amen. Come and give the Lord a better hand one more time. The only people who can make this thing not continue are these two here. If you are with me, can I get an amen? I require and charge both of you, as you will answer at the dreadful day of judgment, when the secrets and motives of and motives of all hearts shall be disclosed, that if either of you know any impediment why you may not be lawfully joined together in a, in a holy matrimony, please confess it now. Willis, you have your time now. If you feel this is not it, it is you who can only stop us. So you can tell us we continue or we stop. But I hear we have a party. The party will continue, will actually go and eat those things. But this will have come to an end. So it is up to you. Today you are allowed. Microphone, microphone. Okay. I want to. I will marry my friend. Come on, let's give 
give us a big hand, please. My dear mom and my sister Flo, you have the freedom too. Maybe yesterday as you were looking in Facebook or in WhatsApp, there are those pictures that were coming and you are beginning to think about them and you feel like, if I go with this guy, I will be wasting my time. It is your choice. I didn't want to see you go to the wrong hands, you know. Just make the right decision. If it is willing, who am I? I will follow suit. Amen. So we're going to put a slow music and uh, uh, officially we are going to hand over the floor to Willis and Willis will be handed to floor with the parents. Praise the name of the Lord. And they will walk much slowly until they meet here. So give us some slow music until they meet here. And let's just celebrate as we give them a big hand as we celebrate what is happening now. Pole pole to walk in pole. Walk in pole.
I, I don't know. So we want you to confirm to this congregation, check and make sure this is the person you love. You can count the teeth, you can make sure the feet are real and everything, and then you confirm to the congregation that I have the flow I had seen. What is yours now?
That was the beginning of our story. <laughs> and then she told me in Nairobi, my flow, Timina. And then, oh, more stories will be said somewhere else. <laughs> Let's give him a big hand, please. Uh, can you tell me the second figure the second figure of the small figure. As you look at her now, can you not tell us those words you told her when you were not there? Those words that took her heart. in the 
name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen.
each other's helping. We ask that God, that your word will always bring them peace. Your word will always encourage them. That they will covet your word. They will be able to be led by your word. And Father, we call upon your name that if there be any hindrance that would come in their, uh, in, in their midst, they will find a way of resolving any issues. And we, we call upon your name, dear Lord, to fight them, their battles, to stand for them, and to enable them, O oh God, to emerge triumphant, and because you're the one who has united them during this season in their lives. We thank you and we bless you. You are to receive all the glory and all the honor for the step they have taken. And we praise you and present them now to you in Jesus' name.
So kindly 
let us give because we are, want to support them and this will be nice. So, and uh, uh, as I do that, I want to call upon the, the father of the bride, Habwe himself, to come and uh, pray. At time, please come. Get a good offering. Please get a good offering. You know, it is only in church we don't give good offerings. I was in a funeral on, um, on Wednesday and we were with him. And uh, we had a benefit of doubt. We had um, the two governors, area, area what, women rep. We had area, area member of parliament. We had uh, the former CS, Mwangi Kiminduri. That was on Wednesday. And we asked for an offering. And these guys, I think they gave us about, everybody, there was about a crowd of 30 people. They gave us about 30,000. And then I stood up to preach. After I finished preaching, and I knew these politicians, once they go, they never come back. So I decided to get another offering, and I collected from them about half a million, so you can imagine. That was on Wednesday. And because of Ramukaluma is here, and I'll never see him again, I want to be very keen. I want to be very keen to see what he gives to me, because again, it is going to these two. So, one as if you will. And uh, I want to ask everybody to give us a song as, as we give. My work is very easy. I will be looking. Go look at your face and what you are giving. You can see I am starting to give. So, that time, please pray. I've also seen, thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He said he doesn't want to pray until we have given. So, and he says we want to see with him. So, check the ladies and check the men. <laughs> Give us a song, please.
I'm giving you each a minute, say your name and where you come from, and that will be lovely. Thank you so much. Karibu ni fumele kabisa.
Let's give Justice a big hand, please. Yes, for photography. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, to the church ministers presiding over this beautiful uh, ceremony of wedding, Willis uh, Nona Mulo is my uncle. Mm -hmm. So I will follow my dad in the Mulo family. This is my uncle. From um, the time I was born today, to date, he only calls me by one name, son, not in a film. Uh, we are celebrating two things here. But I love that uh, we are celebrating the wedding of uh, my beloved uncle, my new mom, no. I will say much where we are going for our celebration. I wanted to tell you that uh, if it were in the perfect times, uh, my good friend would have judged, there would have not been enough space for our new parents and relations from West UK. Uh, maybe I mentioned that uh, to step in, because if you look at the wedding invitation on the side of uh, my uncle Willis, you were invited by Mama Jennifer K. Mama Jennifer K. is his mom. As God uh, willed, Mama Jennifer rested on 12th of December. So that is why our family back at home is not for me. But I'm here to celebrate this because this is important for us. And after that, of course, we'll do the others. My uncle, congratulations. The new family, my mom, uh, uh, Florence, welcome home. We are overjoyed. Maybe my other siblings may just stand from there and, and, and we signify our joy. These are the few of the Willis of the children. <laughs>
they give it back to me. <laughs> Friends, it's come a time that we need to hear the word of God. The person who is going to share the word of God with us today is none other than Dr. Kiru, who was the director for both Willis and Florence uh, when they were working at the World Vision. And he's also representing the World Vision alumni. Dr. Kiru has also been the marital counselor to the newlywed. He's been the one taking them through the marital counseling. Dr. Kiru also runs a ministry, Shepherd Training Center in Sigona, here in Limoru. It is my joy and pleasure now to bring the retired Anglican um, uh, minister to come and share the word of God with us. Let's put our hands together for you. The first director, one mission. Karibu Don't lose hope. 
It's been quite a journey and a great journey. And I'm delighted. I also represent uh, the alumni, those who uh, work with me, uh, the Reverend Dr. Stephen Edombe, who was in charge of church relations and leadership in World Vision. And the Reverend Charles Mindy. I think I have uh, those who work with World Vision, would you please stand where you are? Just stand, uh, give them, give them back to her. To the critic bishop, I know who are just left. Yeah, you may be seated. Some six months ago, strange enough, Reverend Idope asked me, why don't we form an alumni for those uh, who worked in World Vision? Six months ago. And little did we know <laughs> that there was going to be a wedding of those who had worked in World Vision. Can you imagine? God himself in his wisdom knew uh, that we are going to uh, celebrate this great occasion. We also join you Willis to mourn the passing of, of your beloved mom. Last week I, I went through um, the scene with my uh, stepmother who was 108 years. And on the day we buried her is when I received the news of the passing on of Willis' uh, mom. May the Lord rest her soul in peace. And it's good that he decided that uh, we have this celebration, and as Honorable Karuma said, to have the burial and celebrations later. Um, my son, when he got married, just a week before he got married, <coughs> Our father-in-law went to be with the Lord, and we buried him on Thursday, and the wedding was on Saturday. So I know what, what this is, and God in his own wisdom arranges such things, and nobody can ask the question. I, I promise this couple have worked with them, uh, to share with them what marriage is about. And I promised them that I was going to give them seven C's. And those seven C's are also good for each one of us. And so I call them the seven C's couple. Seven really stands for perfection and for completion. And so those are the C's I would like to uh, share with you. At this point, and because of time, I'll just move straight into it. As you are told, I'm a retired American uh, priest, but I'm not tired. Do oh, you think I'm tired? No, I'm not tired. I gave my life to Jesus Christ as a small boy at the age of 12. My mother's church is Africa, in the church. But I became an Anglican because my wife was an Anglican. <laughs> So, Bishop Abuka, um, <laughs> I don't want to threaten you. There's no reason why women should become pepper from now on. <laughs> I'm not only an Anglican, but an Anglican priest because of my wife. <laughs> well, as for son, and she sends her loving greetings and congratulations to you, um, Willis and Florence. The first C is the fact that uh, many years ago, Florence gave her life to Christ. Many years ago, Willis gave his life to Christ. And they not only gave their lives to Christ to live for him, but he also responded to the call to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And here we are witnessing a couple who have been called uh, to serve the Lord, and they are in active um, Christian service. Both of them are pastors. And so the first you see is that knowing Christ is everything. Somebody has said that life with Christ is an endless hope, and life without Christ is our present. And so there is hope for you because you belong to Christ, because you have given your lives to Christ, and because you have also responded uh, to his call and uh, to serve him and to make him known. And so Christ is indeed the head of your home, 
the foundation of every upon uh, which you are establishing your family. And so you can go wrong. That's not just for this uh, latest couple in town, but it's for all of us that our families all seek to have families that when Christ is ahead, nothing can go wrong. One has to first, and I keep the Lord at work of prayer. And so if you can see this triangle that I've drawn, and you can only see it because you belong to Christ, on top of the triangle is Christ. At this corner is Willis. And at this corner is Rollins. And I want to tell you that as you draw closer to Christ, each one of them, you draw closer to each other. Am I speaking to you, Willis and Rollins? And so while Christ is the foundation upon which you are establishing your family, you cannot go wrong. And so that's the first seed. Give the Lord a clap of praise. The second C is covenant. And God, like Jeremiah said in chapter 29, verse 11, through to that, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. For all else, God has that plan to give you a future and hope. When is God has that plan to give you a future and hope? And this is a day. And because that is his covenant to you, and Bishop has led you into these vows that you have made before God and before each other, and you've also made those vows, all of us are witnesses. And so it's a covenant that you have entered into. And so we have a life of covenant, a covenant to God individually and together, and a covenant to each other. And you can be sure the things will forever be true. Because of this covenant, you will daily discover God's will and God's plans for each one of you. And as you walk into that path that God has already set for you, I pray that you experience fulfillment and satisfaction as you walk in the path that God has set before you. And the third one, is companionship. Christian foundation, covenant between yourselves and God, and then companionship. As we read in Genesis chapter 2, uh, chapter 1, the Bible tells us that God saw it was not good for a man to be alone. So for all ends, it's nothing that you're discovering now. God, even before the foundations of the world, he knew that Florence should not forever live alone because there's one that was waiting for her, and that's Willis. Willis, God knew that it was not good for you to be alone. As you all may know, Grace uh, went to be with the Lord and left Willis and the children that you've seen uh, standing here. And so God wanted you not just to be alone. I'm glad that your children are here to witness the fact that you don't want to be alone, even as God knew that it was not God to be alone and provided them that you come and complete your life. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Each one of us is designed for partnership. Each one of us is designed for companionship. And we must avoid at all costs individualism. We must avoid at all costs just feeling that I'm, 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 I'm what was the word? Um, that I'm complete alone. You cannot be complete alone. And I'm not just talking about us individuals. I'm also talking about families. Don't think that you can live alone. No, God designed that you also join with other families. And those families form their community. And not a single community can live alone. Even in this country where you have more than 40 uh, tribes and communities, we cannot live alone. And uh, we need all to see how do we join together because there is value addition as we move together for companionship and for partnership. Give the Lord a clap of praise. There is no room for individualism and selfishness. And the Western world has lived for individualism. And we all know uh, what has, that has meant. And if there's one thing that God has given us in this community, 
as Professor Bit once said, that I am because we are, because we are so I am. I discover my identity and even my purpose because of my relationship with the others. Who do you discover God's purpose for you, even as you join together and experience what companionship is about? Give the Lord a clap of praise. Florence, uh, older brother at Kenyatta College some 52 years ago. Little did I know, as I met the late uh, Patrick Amhoko, that uh, I, I will be uh, presiding over this. And I'm glad uh, Bishop Moffat and your brothers and sisters uh, are here. Um, and, and so only God who knew that that was going to, uh, to take place. And so it tells me there was a commitment in our time, but there's no more commitment today. I'm sure you know as well as I do that commitment has, has gone down. Who wants to commit to anybody? Who wants to commit to an employer? Who wants to commit to a community? Who wants even to commit to a job? We are forever thinking about what is there for me. Instead of what value can I add to the opportunity that I have? So Florence and Willis, your commitment to God individually must precede your commitment to each other. And commitment is really about willingness to pay the price. And the reason we do not want to commit is because the price is high. Marriage requires a willingness to pay that price for this that has begun today. And the reason there are divorces left and right, the reason there are separations left and right, it's not because marriage can't work. There is an willingness on the part of those individuals to pay the price. Early next year, I'll be celebrating 50 years since I got married. And 53 years since I got uh, connected to, to my wife, Nelly. So marriage works. Uh, Florence and Willis. But it works because there's a commitment. There's a willingness to pay the price. It's not instant. Because in a sense, commitment does require patience. It does require time, which is a sure test. And so it's not instant. It's a process. And we must commit to that process. What number of seed do you do I now have with you? Which one was that? That was the fourth this year, isn't it? Yes. I hope you are keeping a record of those seeds. The fifth one now, and the fifth one is communication. Communication is the fifth this year. Um, I'm a student of communication, and I learned at the feet of uh, the founder of this university, and I, I talked with one of this uh, uh, staff here. Uh, Don Smith, who defines communication in terms of the art of creating understanding. That's one of the textbooks that is used. Creating understanding, that's what commun uh, communication is about. What does that mean uh, to Florence and Willis? One of the communication principles says that communication is not what is said, but communication is what is heard. But many of us will keep asking, did you hear what I said? And many of the misunderstandings and all the problems that we have among ourselves is because what we said, we are not getting feedback for what we said. But communication is not what you say, it is what is hard. And so communication uh, with this, it's not just what you tell or else, it's what she hears. What does that mean? You must repeat and repeat and repeat. And one of the communication principles is redundancy. You repeat it so many times until it becomes ridiculous. Then you know you have communicated. <laughs> it's not just communication. It's not what is said, but what is heard. But also meanings in communications are not in words. We think that meanings are in words. No! Meanings are in people. Meanings are in their backgrounds. Meanings are in their own feelings. Meanings are in their own backgrounds. And so 
you may say a word, but I will understand it differently. The perfect meaning of incarnation, of, uh, of communication uh, with his and Florence. And that's what we are celebrating this season, the season of Advent. And next week we'll be witnessing the birth of Jesus Christ. And so in the book of John, we are told that Jesus became flesh. God knew that in his wisdom there was no way he was going to reach out to the people he had created until God became flesh in Jesus Christ. And so perfect definition of communication is that you become what the other person is. Not what you are, you become what the other person is so that you are able to create that understanding that communication is. And so, Florence and Willis don't assume, because that's what we do. We always assume that somebody has understood because we have said, no, no room for assumptions. Uh, be sure that you've communicated. And the communicator is not just words. It's also communication in silence. And soon you will discover that she does not have to say anything, but you've gotten the message. <laughs> you have not said anything, but she's gotten the message. That's communication by excellence, communication in silence, communication in emotions. That's number five. Number six is comfort. Yeah, comfort. It's a difficult period for you and the family you know, to have your beloved mother and a mother waiting to be, you know, to be rested. It's difficult. And we are here not just to celebrate, but also to, uh, to comfort you. You need to realize that you are there from today to comfort each other. There will be moments of weaknesses. There will be moments that you need each other. You need to be held by each other. Be there for each other and comfort each other. I mean, the, the God of all comfort. Be the example of the comfort that you need to share uh, with each other. Comfort is also about encouragement. And I pray that you experience a ministry of encouragement. Barnabas, the son of encouragement. We know very little in the church and in the community is how to really encourage each other. If anything, we only know how to discourage. You open your phone and the message you are receiving there is discouragement. Somebody knocks at your door and the message you have is for discouragement. You come across somebody and all you have is a message of discouragement. We pray that from today you too will be a means of encouraging each other. In the moments of discouragement, you'll be there for each other. Am I speaking to somebody? Would you give the Lord a clap of clap for you? Uh, Bishop, I don't know uh, why you didn't include in and out uh, as they were making the vows. too Christian and too holy and too saintly <laughs> that we don't want to talk about in times of sickness and in times of death. We feel that that, that belongs to the enemy. No. Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulations. And so it's part of this world, it's part of this life. But Jesus said, you will overcome because I've overcome. And so the moment there will be sickness, there will be bereavement. You need to be there for each other. You are not only there for each other because things are working well and things are good. And there is a rosy life around you even when things are not right. You need to be there for each other. And although you didn't say that vow, please note that it's part of the vow you have taken this morning. Bishop? <laughs>
You have your children and even grandchildren uh, that may be here. You have your relatives and you have your friends. All those are communities that are really part and parcel of this that has happened to you. Hello? And so, marriage that was instituted by God, it was not just meant to be an individual thing. No, it's what brings families together. Can you imagine? Alu here. Alu. And who am I? From Mount Kenya region. I mean, it's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> How God brings us together. I'm an Anglican in a member church. These two are Presbyterians. We, we represent lots of uh, communities. And so we serve a God of diversity, not a God of homogeneity. Am I speaking to somebody? And so, who remember the words of Ruth to Naomi uh, Florence? That where you go, that's where I will go. Your people will be my people. What it is that you like is what I like. <laughs> that's a difficult one. <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult one for you, Willis. That what you like is what I like. Your people will be my people. And, and, and I'm glad that uh, uh, Karuma and the family now have a daughter. And I'm glad that uh, uh, Bishop Buffett now have a son. <laughs> and so you no longer belong where you wanted to belong because of this marriage. Am I speaking to somebody? So the first C is what? The second C? The third C? The fourth DC, the fifth DC, the, the sixth DC, and the seventh DC. Give the Lord a clap of praise for the seventh C couple, the latest in town. I offer those for you. But just before I sit down, and Bishop, I'm conscious of the time, and especially during the times we live in, I want to quickly share with you ten secrets. Of a healthy marriage. And it's not just Florence and Williams. This is for all of you. Ten secrets for a healthy marriage. The first one, every marriage has its own challenges. <laughs> it's no marriage that has the same challenges as the other. And so as you begin this journey, don't look at other families. Don't even look at what is happening. You will have your own challenges and deal with them as they are. Am I speaking to somebody? The second one, Everyone when you marry has weaknesses. Uh, Florence, this guy has weaknesses. <laughs> uh, wait until you know what those weaknesses are. Uh, Willis, uh, Florence has weaknesses. Wait until you know what these weaknesses are. But you must know that God is part of the package that God has given you. It's part of the package that you vowed to God and to each other. And you must be ready for that. Weaknesses in every uh, marriage. Number three, everyone you marry has a dark history and a dark past. I don't know how much she has revealed to you of her dark past. I don't know how much she has revealed to you of his dark past. Those dark past is there. And so you must be ready to receive that dark past that you may not have known up to this point. But as you come across it, God provides the grace that you need uh, to go along with it. Number four. Every marriage has a different level of success. Every marriage has different levels of success. And I do not know what God has in store for you. But one thing that I know that the prayer that has been we have offered for you as a man, as a ministers of God, will bring blessing to you, which will follow you, will be on your side, will be ahead of you, will above, be above you. It will not be necessary what other families are experiencing. You have your own uh, share of God's blessings. Number five, to marry is to declare a war in your life. Uh, Florence, you have declared war in your life from this day on. When is you have declared war from this day on. And especially the enemy takes advantage for that war that has been declared. But I'm here to tell you that God is an overcomer. And so, although there will be those wars, be assured that God has won the battle. You are to take your positions 
and see the Lord fight the battle for you. Give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> Number six, there is no perfect marriage. Go ahead and eat that. There is no perfect marriage. Neither is there like your marriage. In 50 years uh, with my wife, well, the wife I have today, I can assure you, is not the wife I had 50 years ago. She's a different one. <laughs> but I'm glad to have a different one who is different from who she was 50 years ago. Or even when I was courting, which took about three years. And so don't look for a perfect husband, promise. Don't look for a perfect wife for women, no. Just look for the gift that God has given you. And as you say, an actor, now when you are given a gift, and especially a good, you don't count the number of teeth that the good has because it's a gift that you have received. Hello? Hello? When it's a gift, you embrace the gift with joy. Number eight, seven. God cannot you give, God cannot give you a complete person that you have all a long way desired. In other words, it's like the previous one, the gift that God has given you. And somebody has said, Willis, it's good for me to remind you, you're a Willis. That who you are is a gift from God. Who you are, Florence, is a gift from God. When it's who you are is a gift from God. What you become is your gift back to God. And how do you become a gift back to God? Is by becoming a gift to each other. So would you be a gift to each other? And as you become a gift to each other, you will indeed be a gift to the world. One as if we son. Number eight, to marry is to take a risk. Oh, you don't know the risk that you take. Oh, baby, you don't know the risk that you have taken as you've taken each other. Maybe I don't know whether you've done the course of risk management. <laughs> to know how to manage the risk that you have taken. I can assure you that he that has called you is faithful. And will help you to manage the risk that is in each other. Number nine, marriage is not just a contractual arrangement, but it's permanent. Until you dare do as part. And find one, every marriage has a price to pay. Every marriage has a price to pay. The marriage is what Florence. And Willis. So make it work. There's a price to be paid. Pay that price. Let God take charge, not you. Don't remind uh, Florence how you are in charge. No! God is in charge. The success is determined by each of you. As you seek God's part in this marriage, He who has brought you into it is faithful and He will do it. I, I wondered what gift to give Florence and Willis today. And Bishop, I decided I wasn't going to give them a Bible because they are only pastors. <laughs> so I think they have tried all the Bibles they are. But I, I looked for a gift to give them. And this gift is really a book. I'm as far as you know. It's a book uh, written by Willard. Uh, Willard is a very uh, prominent uh, counselor of, of Christian marriages. And this particular one is about her needs, uh, problems, and his needs. And I want you from this day, Willis, not to be talking about my needs. No! I don't know how I can emphasize that. It's not about your needs. It's about her needs. And Florence, I don't know how I can emphasize this to you. It's not about your needs. It's about, about his needs. 
please come over here and I want to present this uh, gift to you. Uh, so that every time you think about your needs, your needs is about selfishness. And what has destroyed God's creation is about selfishness. And this country characterized by corruption is, is about greed and selfishness. And this marriage as it starts today, Willis and Florence, it must be about each other's needs, not about your own need. Would you receive this now as, a, as my gift? I pray that none of us, not just Florence and Willis, will go out of the doors of this world church, or even this wedding, without having heard what you have for each one of them. Would you now bless this couple? Bless Florence and bless Willis. And I pray that they will commit to meeting each other's needs. And by so doing, they will be shocked and surprised that their own needs have been met in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Kwa furaha, ambaye hata katika umri ya uzee, 
wale wanapatikana wanaheshimu Mungu na kutukuza yeye kutoka kilindini cha moyo wao tunasema ni asante wewe umekurekebisha na unaturudisha tena katika barabara zako ili tutembee vile unavyopenda na uliamue Ibrahimu wacha mbio mimi ndio mtu Mungu ambaye anaweza yote tembea mbele yangu na usifanye makosa tena kama ile ulifanya jose asante bwana kwa kutufika mkono umetupanguza machozi mahali kote tulikuwa tukilia na bwana umetuyeyusha mahali tulikuwa na kutu na mambo mengi ambayo ilikuwa inaleta hofu katika maisha yetu ya ndoa watoto wetu na hata wajukuu na watukuu kama hatukuja tunawafanya na mrekani tumepata siri kwamba lazima turudie wewe na wewe ambaye ulianzisha hii Biblia inasema wewe ni mwaminifu ambaye pia utaikamilisha kama vile itakutupendeza na kutukuza wewe unabariki siku ya leo na watu wote ambao walinua na kuona ambao wanataka furaha hii ya ndoa na kuona hii agano kiendelea na kufanya kazi lakini zaidi bwana bariki ndugu wetu Willis na ndugu dada wetu Flores kwa unyenyekevu ya kutambulika na Yesu na watu wengi wanabadilisha na hata wanafanya vitu ambavyo haitukuzi watu lakini wanatembea hii safari kama bado wanatambulika na Yesu na wanasema kwamba tutakuishia kule kutubariki kama kongamano kama watu kama taifa na kama kanisa kwa pamoja tukikumbuka siku hii sema ndani ya mioyo yetu kwamba kweli Mungu ni mkuu katika jina la Yesu Kristo tumeomba Amen and everybody say it Amen thank you bishop for your blessing Asante I would want to call upon uh, some of you to come and uh, make conclusion remarks uh, uh, some comes I also want to appreciate everyone of you for having come to Pepper Church of B feel much welcome Mr. Chelule, I want to say thank you for standing with us during the corona times. May the Lord continually bless you. I am still asking you to continue to visit the senator's house now that Flo is gone. Mrs. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether I will continue to visit, so please just make those arrangements. Thank you, everyone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. You know, as I was sitting out there, I was saying, today it's a celebration. And I was saying, wow. I have not had the ladies, uh, what, what do they say? Olukalakala. Eh? So I'm going to ask all the ladies to stand wherever they are, just for two minutes. They've been led by our choir just to figure that Olukalakala. And as we are celebrating Florence and Willis yeah, uh, uh, this, this afternoon, the ladies, Olukalakala. I don't know how you say it in, this, in their language, I'm not sure. <laughs>
the family, despite the seasons that we are in, you were able to come and make it here today to see Lawrence and, and, and Willis uh, join together. Also to the Honorable Justice and to the Honorable MP, thank you so much. To the Minister of the World, we are really blessed. Thank you so much for the word that you brought to us. And of course to our pastor, my, I don't know whether to call him my bigger brother, my brother, Bishop Kunai, thank you so much for opening up your church. You were really able to come and we are really, really grateful. There's been an extension of this celebration. I believe all of us have been invited, so we'll make our way there immediately after the photo session here. After the concluding uh, uh, prayer, there'll be a procession and they'll be led by the bishop and then the newlyweds and I'm asking all the ministers of the world will join them after that and then the rest of us we can really join them together as we make our way out of the church. So once again, I appreciate each one of you for coming, for celebrating uh, 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 this marriage, and may the Lord richly bless you. We're going to pray. And immediately after that, then we'll ask the newlyweds to lead us. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you. We bless you for the good day that you have given us. Thank you, Father, for Willis and Florence, that, Lord, you purposed it that today we may celebrate their marriage, O God. Thank you, Father, for bringing these families together, that now we are one, O God. We offer a prayer of blessing to the family. We offer a prayer of blessing to this congregation. We offer a prayer of blessing, Father, to the couple, O Jehovah Lord. We want to thank you, Jehovah, that your presence will continue being with us, even as we continue with the celebration. Father, we ask that you may be with us, O oh Father. We want to thank you, Jehovah. We want to bless you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
Yeah. 